Today I'll tell you a story spanning about 250 years, but will come full circle as you'll see. It is the story of this courthouse, arguably one of the most beautiful ones in the state of West Virginia. It's also the story of this city and the people who brought it all into being. Ultimately, it would be one man, David Morgan, whom I've told you about in David Morgan's prophetic vision that would set the wheels in motion. Albert's great, 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 great grandfather, Zachary Morgan, and his brother David came into this region about 1765 or 66. While Zachwell would come to found the city of Morgantown, David was not as ambitious, but he saw the potential in this new wilderness where he would build a homestead north of here in what would become Reevesville. While enlisted in the Revolutionary War, he would come to meet Boaz Fleming and tell him of the wonders of this beautiful valley and and by 1787 had convinced him to lead a party of settlers to the area from Delaware. So Boaz, with his wife and one-year-old daughter, Clarissa, came west with 43 settlers to the mouth of Paw Paw Creek near David's homestead. His journal tells us that these settlers ranged from the age of four months to an 82-year-old. They traveled more than 300 miles across the Allegheny Mountains with four carts ox-driven, four wagons horse-drawn, nine pack horses, 70 chickens, 30 turkeys, 16 cows, 20 sheep, and the sprout of a pear tree. All of them survived this journey. Boaz and family would settle down, and the family would have four sons and seven more daughters, while David would move south of here and upriver on his nearby 361-acre riverfront property. He established a community called Petty John after the former owners of the ferry there. Aside from the ferry, it also had a mail drop, trading post, and home with salt works. It formerly sat in Harrison County, which is now part of South Fairmont. The Flemings built up a large farm here in Fairmont at the present site of downtown, which was just north of the boundary of the old Monongalia and Harrison counties. In 1808, Boaz Fleming made his annual trek to Clarksburg to pay one of his brothers Harrison County taxes. While in Clarksburg, he attended a social gathering that included Dolly Madison, his cousin. He complained to her about having to travel over a hundred miles each year from his home to pay his Monongalia County taxes and his brother's Harrison County taxes. Dolly Madison supposedly suggested that he create his own county to save him all the travel. Six years later, Boaz Fleming circulated a petition to do precisely that, naming the proposed county Madison County in honor of Dolly and President Madison. The petition failed to gain sufficient support to be presented to Virginia Assembly. To create a new county, a county seat was required, so taking the initiative, in 1817, Boaz and his son cleared off 40 acres of his 254 acres in order to establish just such a town. It was surveyed into 85 one-half acre lots. Boaz donated lots for a Presbyterian church and for a school. He named the streets and set up trustee form of government. He named this new town Middletown, 
either in honor of Middletown, Delaware, where he met, courted, and married his wife, Betsy, or the simple fact that this town was in the middle between Clarksburg and Morgantown, when a road was built between the two cities in 1819. Boaz's new town was incorporated on January 19th of 1820. Sadly, Boaz would never see his new county happen as he passed away on March 20th, 1830. Finally, Middletown was named newly formed Marion County's first county seat on February 18th of 1842. At that time, it was suggested that the town's name be changed to Fairmont because the town had a beautiful overlook of the Monongahela River giving it a fair mount. The borough of Fairmont was incorporated in 1843 by the Virginia General Assembly with the help of David Morgan's grandson, Congressman William S. Morgan. The first court session was simply held in a resident's house. The next meeting was held in the Methodist Episcopal Church, which was the recently demolished Holliston Episcopalian Church, where the future sessions of the court were held until the courthouse was built. At the May term of the court of that same year, the contract for building the courthouse was awarded for the sum of $3,150.75. The courthouse was considered a fine building when it was completed. It bore such a contrast to the other buildings in Fairmont at that time that it had no doubt presented an imposing appearance. Since the recent improvements in the county seat, however, and the erection of so many other handsome business houses, the contrast was the other way. The courthouse, together with its grounds, occupied about one-third of the space between Jefferson and Monroe Streets, on the north side of Maine, and was a large two-story brick surmount, surmounted by a cupola containing a splendidly toned bell. Six heavy columns graced the front of the building and supported the gable, which extended over a pavement in front of the door. In front of the building was a large yard containing shade trees, and in the rear was the jail with the sheriff's residence, which were new having been erected in 1877 at a cost of about $8,000. The business of the county continued to increase to such an extent that it would soon be found necessary to tear down the courthouse and build a greater one and more convenient one, which it was hoped would be more creditable to the county in point of architectural beauty than the one now standing. In those days, everybody that could possibly make it convenient came to town during the setting of the county court. Especially this was the case on the first and seconds of each term. They were set apart as general trading days. On these days, men, women, and children came to town with their horses, cattle, grain, butter, eggs, chicken, and soap and exchanged them for such articles as supplied their demands and necessities. Court days were famous too for ending disputations and fisticuffs and drinking whiskey. All the quarrels and wranglings among the baser sort of the people of the county were referred to county court days for final adjustment, and they usually ended up in a knockdown dragout and bloody noses. Rumblings for a nicer courthouse continued. The town of Mannington wanted to build a new courthouse in their town, forming a new county from that section of Marion County, and things were progressing in their favor. When the Marion County Court learned of this, it was decided forthwith to demolish the house, contract for a new one, and thus placed the debt upon the county as now constituted before action, looking into the new county could be taken. Then on Tuesday, January 12th of 1897,
Fairmont fought back. The county court of Marion County met that afternoon and passed a resolution ordering the immediate destruction of the courthouse with a view to building a new one. And they said it was unsafe anymore. To make this happen, political rousers went to the local bars, started buying drink rounds for people to help, and the patrons were happy to go. By four o'clock that day, they had 55 people tearing down the courthouse. At 11 p.m., 30 were still at it. By morning, it was demolished beyond repair, and it was just too late to institute injunction proceedings to save the old courthouse. A new courthouse would be built on the site of the old one, taking from 1897 to 1900 to complete. It would be done in a Beaux-Arts neoclassical style with two grand Corinthian column porches topped by gable displaying ornate friezes with a dome supporting a woman holding scales. Now recently, Albert was at the courthouse and did some filming of the interior. It had been remodeled and the interior had changed with the remodeling. The entrance used to open up to a rotunda with ornate marble floorings. It has now been divided up and it is unrecognizable from before the remodel. Still, it holds some surprises.
murals with various scenes. One in particular depicts David Morgan fighting a Native American warrior to save his children, as told in our video, David Morgan's Prophetic Dream. So David's love of this land brought about a city, a county, and is now immortalized in a mural inside of this memorial historic courthouse. And now you know the rest of the story.